Okay, here we go with 10.4. We're going to take a look at it in two lessons. First one is going to be carboxylic acids, and the second one will be esters. So let's get to our last two functional groups here and talk about the organic acids. Uh, the one in particular we're going to look at are called the carboxylic acids due to the carboxyl group that we'll see as their um, functional group. So carboxylic acids have this unique combination uh, attached to a final carbon. So you'll see two oxygens attached, one being double bonded. And this is actually two different functional groups uh, attached together to make a brand new functional group uh, that we'll call carboxyl. So as you take a look at um, the picture here on the page, okay, you can see that you have our familiar hydroxyl group. All right, when it's just that, we uh, have our alcohols. One that we don't really get into too much here, you'll see that one in university is called the carbonyl group, in which you have a double bonded oxygen involved in your uh, organic structure. When you have both of them attached to a single carbon, we call this guy here a carboxyl group. And um, organic molecules that have this particular um, arrangement of atoms uh, end up being our organic acids. So, what do we uh, note here when we start taking a look at these carboxyl groups and carboxylic acids? We'll find that the carboxyl group always has to be at the end of your carbon chain because it's going to use three of the four available bonds. This means it is easy to go looking for these carboxyl groups and they're easy to recognize when we see them in structural diagrams uh, because they'll always be at the end of your particular uh, structure. This also means that it is always attached to carbon-1. It'll be the one that you will start numbering from when you're starting to name other uh, alkyl branches or alkyl halides that you might see attached to this. Where do we see them? Well, these are generally uh, the naturally occurring ones that we'll see in things like citrus fruits. Uh, fruits sorry. Uh, this is why they have that sour taste. Uh, some species of ants and other insects will have these as part of their uh, defense mechanisms or saliva or stings. And just like any other acids, these are characterized by producing a low pH in solution and their tangy, sour taste. Okay, so let's get into naming the carboxylic acids. We're going to name these very similar to our alkanes. All right, so you'll see this single bonded carbon structure. And what we'll do is we will drop the E out of the alkane name and we'll replace it with a suffix, oic. Notice you actually have a space in your name now and the word acid. Okay, so unlike all of our organic naming prior to this, where there were no spaces at all, be very mindful that when you're naming your carboxylic acids, the word acid is removed and spaced out behind um, the organic name. So you can see an example of that here. All right, here is ethane. All right, two carbons fully saturated with hydrogens. And then we see ethanoic acid in which you've used up all of that available bonding space on that final carbon. And so the E gets dropped. Oic suffix replaces this. There's no number necessary because it always has to be carbon one as it's a terminal functional group, or by that I mean it's at the very end of the carbon chain. And then you'll notice, and this will be important on your chapter 10 quiz, you must put a single space in there, and then you will type in or write the word acid. Okay, so unlike all of our previous naming, this one does have a space within the name. We can get to a couple of examples here, so we're going to try and draw a few of these. What I'd like you to do is try and do those, so pause the video, uh, see if you can come up with a couple of them first, or at least at some point while we're going through this, see if you can come up with it, uh, and then check your work. But here we go, we can do a, a couple right off the bat. I will do methanoic acid. So for methanoic acid, remember you'd be starting with methane, which means just a single carbon. And then, since it's methanoic acid, I'll put my double bond O and my OH, or my carboxyl group, onto that carbon. 
For the rest, I just need to make sure that carving is satisfied. And so there is the final H that I need so that carbon gets four bonds. So we've gone from methane to methanoic acid. On the previous page, we already had it as an example. We had uh, ethane going to ethanoic acid. So there's your two carbons for ethanoic acid. And then we can just double bond O, OH on one of those carbons. And then we just make sure that all of the rest get their necessary hydrogens. And there we go. There's your ethanoic acid. Uh, we have one here. You can see uh, for C, we have this long chain. Okay, so longest chain, but there is your carboxyl group at carbon 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so we have hex or hexane, all single bonded. Drop the E, put on the OIC suffix, put in a space, and write the word acid. So there's your straight chain hexanoic acid. For D, we see 3-ethyl heptanoic acid. Okay, so I'll do that one on the uh, next page here. So we have 3-ethyl heptanoic acid. Hept being 7 is a fairly long carbon chain, so I'll do this in a line diagram. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there's my finishing carbon. I will double bond O and OH that one. There we go. So you can see what it looks like in a line angle diagram. Remember, as soon as I write something other or any other letter, the carbon is not there. It is that particular symbol or atom that I have illustrated. So this is carbon 1 then, 2, 3, and we had an ethyl group on that one. So I would have something like this. And there you go. There is your 3-ethyl heptanoic acid. One more to look at here before we get into our homework and practice. Okay, we can see another line diagram here. We can see that unique functional group for the carboxyl group. Okay, so this is a carboxylic acid. That makes it carbon 1. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's oct. So what would have been octane is now changed to octanoic acid. Again, note your space. And then we have to talk about any branches that we see, and on carbon 2, we see a bromo group. So this becomes 2 dash bromo, no space there, octanoic acid. Okay, so pretty straightforward and easy to name when we get into the carboxylic acids. What I'd like you guys to do, make sure that you are reading through and taking a look at the textbook examples. All right, there's more there than uh, just goes through the notes, so that's always a good thing to be looking at. Try a couple of practice questions on 438, and you can also certainly take a look at 10B and uh, try that lab. Answer key for that one is found on D2L. Okay, so that's your carboxylic acids. Uh, next lesson, we will take a look at the esters and take a look at the esterification reaction uh, that makes those. There you go.